Good morning and welcome to Lakeside Presbyterian Church. My name is Pastor Chris Gellini. Today we're trying something a little different. I want you to enjoy God's creation as we're outside my home on a beautiful day. And uh, I hope you'll enjoy the time that we're going to spend together as we worship the one true living God. Please join me in prayer. Lord, as we're out here in your creation, we thank you for the beauty and the majesty of it. It definitely points to your almighty power and your great creativity. Lord, bless us as we now come together to worship you in Jesus' name. Amen. Creator God, how easily our ambitions turn to lust. We are ashamed that we do not see our fellow humans as precious in your sight. Rather, we use others for our own personal gratification. Lord, you warn us to be careful where we look. Yet wrong things can be just a computer mouse click away, and we are tempted. We lust for power over others, yet we have not developed self-discipline. We give no thought to how we are cluttering our heads and souls with the messages that we take in from advertising and media and news sources. We ignore the deep communion that you desire to have with us, and we accept the cheap and casual messages of intimacy from the world around us. Set us free from the oppression and bondage of wrong relationships and hide us under the shadow of the cross. Help us to proclaim your truth boldly and in a spirit of the love that drove you to take the weight of our sins on the cross. In Jesus' name, Amen. People of God from the north and the south and the east and the west, hear the words of pardon from the Lord to the prophet Isaiah. Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. 
Though your sins be like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. And also hear Paul's bold proclamation to the Corinthians. As God's fellow workers, we urge you not to receive God's grace in vain. For he says, In the time of my favor I heard you, and in the day of salvation I helped you. I tell you, now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. Friends, we are forgiven. The Old Testament reading for this morning comes from Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 through 28, and Genesis chapter 2, verse 15. Hear the word of the Lord. Then God said, Let us make human beings in our image to be like ourselves. They will reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, the livestock, and all the wild animals on the earth, and the small animals that scurry along the ground. So God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and govern it. Reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, and all the animals that scurry along the ground. Genesis chapter two, verse 15. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. The reading of the word of the Lord. The New Testament reading for this morning comes from Acts chapter 2, verse 42 through 47. Hear the word of the Lord. They devote themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship to the breaking of bread and to prayer. A deep sense of awe came over them all, and the apostles performed many mir miraculous signs and wonders. And all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. They worshiped together at the temple each day met in homes for the breaking of bread, and shared their meals with a great joy and generosity. All the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. The reading of the word of the Lord. Gospel reading for this morning comes from Luke's Gospel, chapter 8, verses 1 through 3. Hear the word of the Lord. After this, Jesus traveled about from one town and village to another, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. The twelve were with him, and also some women 
who'd been cured of evil spirits and disease. Mary, called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had come out. Joanna, the wife of Cusa, the manager of Herod's household. Susanna, and many others. These women were helping to support them out of their own means. The word of the Lord. Please join me in prayer. Lord, as we now open up your word, we ask that you bless us as we hear it. Give us something, a nugget, Lord, that we can take away from this that would help us live our lives for Jesus this week. In your name we pray. Amen. Today is Mother's Day, when we express our gratitude and love for our moms. The relationship between a mother and a child is truly a gift from God. So with relationships in mind, I want to talk to you about one of our greatest needs as human beings, community. When I was on staff with the Navigators at UCLA, every summer we had what we called summer training programs. These summer training programs, it'd be about three or four of them, would have around 30 students each. And they would meet at different times during the summer. And students from different universities throughout Southern California would come to be a part of the two-week training. It was an opportunity for them to grow deeper in their relationship with Jesus Christ. Oh, what a good time we had. During those two weeks, there'd be big meetings. We'd have small groups. We had teams working together. We had work projects. We ate well and we had a lot of fun things that we did together. So that by the end of this two weeks, we were like family. We really got to know each other and we really learned how to love one another. So that when we started to depart, tears were coming down students' eyes when they realized how close they'd become with each other. During the school year, we'd get together for major navigator events and when these students would see each other, it was like homecoming. Strong, devoted fellowship was one of the keys of our summer training programs. Well, you might be wondering, why talk about relationships and communities when we are sheltered in place, when we have been locked down? I believe that relationships have suffered greatly. My daughter begged me this week to let her spend one hour with one of her girlfriends if they just spent six feet apart from each other. It's been real hard on most of us. Pastor and author Mark Roberts writes about COVID-19 and relationships, and he says this, those who feel, who live alone, often feel isolated and lonely cut off from people whom they love and need. They are wishing desperately for the chance to hang out with other folks or exchange a hug or two. The people who are sheltering with family or roommates, despite longing for relationships, may also be, may be feeling trapped with people who are driving them absolutely crazy. Most of us are longing to be with other people. I know I am. Scripture tells us that this is quite natural. We were created by God for community with others. We just heard a reading from Genesis about the Jewish version of creation. In chapter 2, verse 18, is where God says, it is not good for man to be alone. I will make a suitable helper for him. Does this resonate with you? It's not good for us to be alone, especially when God created us for relationships and community. The New Testament has over 50 verses encouraging believers to be with one another love one another, 
forgive one another. Be at peace with one another. Be devoted to one another. Be kind to one another. Just a few for each of us to chew on. Jesus felt so strongly about this that in his prayer in John 17, unity with love for one another was a major theme. The longing for relationships and community reminds us of, that God made us to be people in relationships. Our gospel reading this morning from Luke chapter 8, verses 1 through 3, reminds us that Jesus was not a lone ranger. Jesus traveled from town to town with his 12 disciples and a few other women who would support them in their journey. We see in Acts chapter 2, verses 42 through 47, Pentecost Sunday, the first church was created with 3,000 people. What did the disciples do? Well, with everyone now united in Christ, the 3,000 and the disciples, they were committed to the teaching of God's Word, being involved in prayer meetings, and fellowship. The early church was devoted to fellowship. The early church met day by day in the temple courts, and then afterwards they would eat meals in each other's homes daily. The Apostle Paul, when he would travel to a new territory, would not move forward unless he had someone with him, because he knew how important it was to have someone assist him in his ministry. I remember when I moved to Los Angeles and didn't really know anyone. It didn't take me long to realize how lonely I was, how much I missed family and friends. Two things occurred that turned this around. First, a few months after moving, someone mentioned to me that Universal Studios was auditioning for new tour guides and that I should try. Well, I did, and they hired me, and I had instant community. To this day, I still have friends from my Universal Studios tour guide days. The second thing that I did is I joined a wonderful church family. This church family embraced me wholeheartedly and started to fill the empty bucket that I had the need for community. God knew that I needed relationships and he provided for them. Today after our worship service, we are meeting online for a coffee hour with Zoom. We had our first virtual coffee hour last Sunday and it was terrific as we all got to see each other and encourage one another. We're doing this every week after worship until shelter in place is lifted. The email that I sent you out this week tells you how to join. I hope you will. We need each other. Please join me in prayer. Lord, thank you for reminding us today how important we are to one another that we have Jesus Christ in common and that we have all that you're doing in our lives in common. Lord, bless us as a church family, as a congregation, that we might have beautiful fellowship and relationships with one another. In Jesus' name, amen.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. While we're in shelter in place, we're going to be celebrating the Lord's Supper each Sunday. Most likely we'll be doing it when we return to the sanctuary as well, for the first week at least. We are reminded by God that 
we are not only created for a relationship with one another, but to have a relationship with him. And he reminds us of the price that he paid so that we could have that relationship to the sacrifice of his son, Jesus. And so that's what the Lord's Supper is all about, remembering what Jesus did for us so that we could be in relationship with God. So I'd like to invite all of you who have trusted Jesus with your life to celebrate the Lord's Supper with us today. Please join me in prayer. Lord, we come to you this morning with hearts of thanksgiving, thanking you for people, thanking you, Lord, that despite so many different ways that we live and much of it not in relationship to you, you still love us, you still care for us, you still want us to be with you. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for your Holy Spirit who lives and dwells within us. Thank you for your church, the body of Christ. It's all about fellowship and community. Thank you, Lord. So as we come together virtually, Lord, to celebrate the Lord's Supper, I pray and ask for your Holy Spirit to make it personal for us, to make it real, that we would remember Jesus in the midst of it all. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. So it was on that night in which Jesus was betrayed that he took a loaf of bread. And after he'd given thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. And then after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink of this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. I'd like to invite you now to take a little piece of bread and hold it up and listen to Jesus' words once more. Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Take and eat. Now I invite you to take the cup that you have before you. It could be juice, it could be whatever you want. Hear the words of Jesus. Drink of this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood. It's poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Please take and drink. Lord, we thank you that we could celebrate the Lord's Supper together this day. It gives us the boldness and the courage, the love and the grace to be in this world as the light of Jesus to those around us, that they might know the good news of the gospel. In Jesus' name, amen. I just want to remind you, that God created us for community. So this week, let me encourage you, make a phone call to somebody in our congregation, send them an email, somehow communicate with them. And here's the real challenge, connect with somebody who's not a part of our church family so that they know that you're thinking about them. And remember, enjoy Mother's Day. <laughs>